Hey, it's Michelle, your CSC Biology Tutor. In this video, I'll be looking at the CSET Human and Social Biology Subject Overview. So I want to give an outline of the topics on the syllabus that you should know. So let's look at the syllabus outline. CSET Human and Social Biology is divided into five sections. Section A, Living Organisms in the Environment. Section B, Life Processes. Section C, Heredity and Variation. Section D, Disease in Humans. And Section E, The Impact of Health Practices on the Environment. So we're gonna break down the topics that you should know in each of these sections. So let's look at Section A, Living Organisms in the Environment. So this section covers the following topics. So you need to know the characteristics of living things. So this would have a special focus on mammals, particularly humans, of course. And then going on to cell structure and function, you need to know how to label an animal and plant cells. And also you should know the selected microbes. So the microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi and also viruses. So you should know the differences in terms of the structures of these microorganisms. And in terms of cells, we're continuing with cell specialization. So how cells come together to form tissues, tissues come together to form organs, and then organs forming the organism, the organ systems, and then the organism. So basically the building up the levels of organization within an organism. And then cell transport processes would include osmosis and diffusion and active transport so you should have an understanding of the differences between those three cell transport processes how molecules would move in and out of the cell the sixth topic would be photosynthesis so how plants make their own food you should know the how to test the leaf for starch the photosynthesis equation of course so that would be included in that topic. The seventh topic, food chains and food webs. So knowing about producers and the different types of consumers and how energy is transferred in the food web and the food chain. And then the final topic on this section, in this section A would be nutrient cycles. So we're looking at how carbon and nitrogen are cycled in the ecosystem. So also you should know the role of decomposers in each of these cycles, both the carbon and the nitrogen cycle. So let's go on to section B. So section B, life processes. So this is the section that would cover the structure and functions of all the key systems in the human body. So in the first topic, nutrition, it will look at the diet, the nutrients required in the diet, malnutrition, causes of constipation and diarrhea, hygienic practices in food preparation, the structure of the teeth, teeth decay, um, also of course the importance of digestive enzymes, the different enzymes involved in digestion, and you should also know the structure of course of the digestive system and especially pay attention to the small intestines and the importance of villi in the small intestines in terms of its need for increasing the rate of absorption of nutrients so that is what will be covered in the topic nutrition for the respiratory system you should know obviously how to label the respiratory system the movements of the different parts of the respiratory system that are involved in breathing. You should know the definition of vital capacity, the importance of gaseous exchange, the characteristics of gaseous exchange surfaces. Mouth-to-mouth um, -mouth resuscitation is another topic that you should know about, the steps taken to perform mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation on someone who isn't breathing on their own. And then you should also know about cigarette smoking and its effects on the human body. 
and then finally anaerobic and aerobic respiration know the difference between those types and know when anaerobic respiration comes into play in terms of when there's an oxygen depth when you have strenuous activity how the body would rely on anaerobic respiration but the third topic the circulatory system that would include the blood the heart blood vessels um, also would cover heart attack and its causes and effects and then finally the lymphatic system so oh and, and then also the blood clotting process the steps taken in blood pro blood clotting the fourth topic the skeletal system that will look at the bones of the skeleton the bone structure the typical structure of a long bone so the different parts of the long bone the difference between bone and cartilage the difference between ligaments and tendons you should know the different types of joints and then how the muscles behave at the joint well particularly um, in the arm the biceps and the triceps and you should also know about the factors that would affect the skeletal system so like nutrition disease hormones etc um, posture that kind of thing moving on to the next topic excretion and homeostasis so this will cover the excretory organs such as the kidney the lungs the skin so you should know the products produced from each of them and then in terms of homeostasis how the body maintains a balance of certain factors so you should understand the different processes of osmoregulation blood sugar blood glucose regulation and temperature regulation so all of that would be included into that topic excretion and homeostasis sit so we have coordination and control so this is dealing with the nervous system the brain the neurons sense organs the structure and function of the eye which would include accommodation sight defects and then finally the endocrine system so those are the key topics you should know in coordination and control and then finally in reproduction you should know the reproductive system of the male and females and you should know the difference between sexual and asexual reproduction and then the menstrual cycle the process of fertilization leading up to pregnancy you know to label a pregnant woman the functions of the different parts in pregnancy the birth process so the different stages of the birth process labor and then you should also know about prenatal care birth control abortion and family planning so those are the topics in section B life processes okay let's move on to section C heredity and variation so this section covers the following topics so we're going to look at cell division basically the differences between mitosis and meiosis so you should know the key features of each type of cell division and be able to compare them the differences and any similarities and then secondly genetic and environmental variation so that would include the differences between discontinuous and continuous variation thirdly inheritance of characteristics so this involves the different types of genetic crosses such as the complete dominance which would include albinism and tongue rolling and height so that is when the allele has a complete dominance over the recessive allele and then you should also know about co-dominance as well which is the inheritance of blood groups and then sex link traits that is an area you for sure need to know about so how the diseases hemophilia and the condition color blindness is inherited through the sex chromosomes so the alleles are attached to the sex chromosomes so make sure you know how to perform those genetic crosses and you should also be familiar with pedigree charts so they show like the family history of certain conditions so know how to read off the information from pedigree charts and then the last topic in section C would be on genetic engineering so make sure you understand the different applications of genetic engineering in medicine 
in agriculture so also be able to describe how insulin is made as one of the main products that you should know how to describe the creation through a genetic engineering and also understand the, the pros and the cons of genetic engineering those advantages and disadvantages what are the good side the bad side so that would be section C now let's move on to section D disease and its impact on humans so the topics that you should know about would be firstly the categories of diseases the different categories of diseases we have mental hereditary physiological deficiency and infectious diseases and you should know the, the definition of health and disease to first begin with and apart from the different categories of diseases you should know their causes the prevention and treatment specifically as it relates to non-communicable diseases such as obesity diabetes hypertension and then so that would go under the category of chronic diseases and then you should know about certain infectious diseases how they are transmitted so this would include HIV AIDS um, gonorrhea other sexually transmitted diseases like herpes and then acute respiratory infections waterborne diseases such as cholera so you need to know these different types of infectious diseases fourthly personal hygiene that's a topic personal hygiene and then also sterilization ways of controlling the amount of microbes that are around so in your food in the water so you should know about sterilization versus disinfection you should know the difference between antibiotics and antiseptics so then for the fifth topic immunity so this would cover the immune system the different types of immunity so you have the natural immunity versus artificial immunity then you have actively acquired immunity and passively acquired immunity so you should know the four different types of immunity and finally drug abuse so the effect of drugs on the individual so going back to infectious diseases I didn't mention that vectors and the life cycle of vectors particularly the mosquitoes so the mosquitoes such as the Aedes aegypti mosquito that causes dengue and then the plasmo the Anopheles mosquito that causes malaria so you should know the differences between vectors and pathogens so know your vectors mosquitoes house flies rats and the diseases that they cause so all of that will be under infectious diseases all right let's move on to the final section section E so the impact of health practices on the environment so this section E would cover the following topics pollution so know your definition for pollution the different types of pollutants and how they affect the environment and ways that you can control the pollution and then the water cycle and ways that water can be purified both on a small scale and a large scale you should know to test water for our bacteria explain how human activities affect the water supplies and generally explain how water can become contaminated and then obviously treated so the next topic would cover sewage treatment and sewage disposal methods such as the use of the pit latrine um, you should know the different types of sewage treatment the different stages of the sewage treatment proper and improper disposal methods so all of that would be dealing with sewage know the definition of sewage and then the last topic solid waste management that would cover um, landfills recycling domestic refuse disposal biodegradable versus non biodegradable waste so those are the topics that you should know about in section E so now that I've covered the syllabus outline I'm going to move on to look quickly at the exam format so the first paper paper 1 consists of 60 multiple choice questions and 
that would be done within one hour and 15 minutes. So that is worth 60 marks, which would be 40% of your overall grade. The second paper, paper two, consists of six questions to be done in two hours. And the paper is divided into two sections. Section A would contain four compulsory structured questions and usually one of the questions may be investigative, meaning that they may have a graph or a chart, a diagram um, that you should be able to interpret and answer questions based on that. And each of these questions is worth 15 marks. And then in section B, you would have the two compulsory structured essay questions. So each question is also worth 15 marks. So that gives a total of 90 marks for paper two, and that is 60% of the overall grade. So I hope you have a better understanding now of the topics that you should know about for CSEC Human and Social Biology and the exam format.